That back there is a fallen nap. And the Fallen Nav is a nice little aircraft. It was designed to be lightweight, super lightweight, but it could do ground attack and it was like a little bit of a fighter aircraft as well. It was armed with a couple of Aiden cannons. I think they were 30 mils. Might need to check that. Um, you could put a couple of 500 pound bombs on it or you could put, I think it was 12 30 mil rockets on it, something like that. In fact, there's a sign that says it right here. So I could just read the sign. Yeah, 12 three inch rockets, uh, two 500 pound bombs, or yeah, it was two 30 mil laden cannons. I knew a thing. <laughs> um, yeah, but the idea was this thing was supposed to be a lightweight little aircraft that you could use in an attack role, ground attack role for ground support, um, but it was really lightweight so you could deploy it quickly, you could run it on a very simple maintenance budget, all that kind of stuff. And there was even a madcap plan to stick three of these on the bottom of a Vulcan bomber so that the Vulcan would act like a mummy bird and then three of these would be strapped to the bottom and then if they found themselves getting tangled up by Russian interceptors, three of these would drop off and swarm in and try and fight off the threat. And then the idea was they would then try and fly back to Germany or they would eject and try and find their way out by other means. They couldn't reattach to the Vulcan once they detached, but that was the idea. The Vulcan would be a carrier. Um, that never ended up being a thing, and probably for good reasons. <laughs> but I'm not necessarily going to get into that today. What I'm actually going to get into is this thing over here, which was the power plant for the Fallen Net, and that was a uh, Bristol Sydney Orpheus. Um, and it's a bit of an unusual jet engine. So it's a jet turbine engine, but it's not quite the same as a lot of the other, well, it's not the same as the, the big engines that we've looked at for some of the other aircraft. So. Part of the specs of this engine was that it needed to be very lightweight. And I'm going to go into a little bit of detail about what they did to make it work like that. But only on the channels that support long form content. So uh, if we're on TikTok, that means this is where this video comes to an end. For those of you who are watching this on the big boy content in long form, you get to have a little more look at this engine more closely. So over here at the back, at the front, actually, this is the front of the engine. And what you have at the front is the, uh, the electric motor for the, to start the spindle up. You have the fuel injectors for all the combustion chambers and you have a compressor, which is fairly normal for a jet engine. It's a series of fans that get smaller and smaller and smaller so that by the time they get to here, you've got a nice high compressed bit of air and that's squirted into the engine. And this is, I think it's a turbo fan or it works similar to a turbo fan. And that's because from here onwards, it all gets a little bit different. So I'm just gonna move the camera down. Now this end, sorry, it's a bit of a squeeze, but this end is where the clever bit happens. So it's like a normal jet engine. You have a compressor at the front where it sucks in the air. You have a, uh, and squeezes it. You have a combustion chamber that sets fire to it and goes bang. And then you have an outlet, an exhaust where it blows. And that's how a jet engine works basically. But this one, unlike a normal jet engine, has a bit of a different thing going on in the middle. You see, a normal jet engine has a spindle, a solid spindle that goes all the way down from the compressor to the fan at the back, and the fan at the back spins that spindle, which drives the compressor. The problem with that is that as that spindle gets longer, it gets more and more prone to a issue of uh, warping. So it will bend, bow, it's called bowing, so it bows in the middle, and then it's like, think of it like a skipping rope. Eventually, as soon as it starts to get to a too high a speed, it bows, and then it starts to vibrate, and you have massive vibration problems in the engine. And the way that's normally solved is you have another spindle, sorry, another bearing in the middle, and that bearing in the middle between the compressor and the uh, combustion chambers then shortens the actual lengths of the shaft that are free to move so it increases the frequency at which that bowing happens so the idea is you try and put enough stability in that the bowing frequency happens much higher than the spinning the normal operating spin of the engine the way this got around that problem was this it's a big hollow metal drum and this hollow metal drum gave it two advantages. One, it meant that it gave enough rigidity that at the normal operating uh, speed of this engine, for a spindle of the same weight, this would have a much higher bowing frequency. So it wouldn't bow until a much higher frequency, which meant that you could then run the engine without the need for a central bearing. So all the extra bits of engine and bearings and stuff that went in the middle bit could be pulled out. So the bearings of the engine, the weight of that lot was reduced by a third. You know, which is a significant weight decrease. And that meant you could use 
the equivalent of a much lighter spindle but get a much higher rate of revolutions of the engine. So that was one way they reduced the weight of the engine. In fact, that was the main way they reduced the weight of the engine. Now, in order to make the engine more efficient, what happens with engines is, if they get too hot, they start buckling and you have problems. So to get a small engine to be efficient, small engines tend to build up a lot of heat and don't have any way of really dissipating it as well. The way they got around it with this is it's not a turbofan engine, but it kind of works in a similar way in that you had these, these combustion chambers that were arranged around this central spindle. And these combustion chambers, each one of these, there were seven of them, had a little bit of extra room so they could expand so you wouldn't have to worry too much about expansion in the combustion chambers. But also, air that was ducted into these to mix with fuel and combust was then mixed with air that came around the outside of these which was used to cool the hottest part of the combustion chamber, which is this section, and air could feed into them. So unlike a turbofan where the, the turbofan, the fan air, kind of comes around the outside of the combustion chamber, this air kind of came around the outside, so it missed the mixing with fuel part, but then mixed in with the air to reduce the problem of these getting too hot. So it kind of works like a turbofan, but not exactly, if you follow what I mean. Um, but yeah, so there were seven of these, and then that meant that overall this thing had a thrust to weight ratio well it, it could weigh 800 pounds and it had uh, about 5,000 pounds of thrust so pretty decent thrust to weight ratio which meant that it could actually make the that go really fast on quite a small fairly fuel efficient engine so uh, so yeah that's the Orpheus and that's that's what makes it a bit different to some of the other engines we've looked at and while the Orpheus was small but very mighty, it actually had a descendant. There was an engine that was built off the back of this and off the technology in this that is rather more famous and a heck of a lot more powerful, and it's one of these. And it's the Pegasus engine that sits in the heart of this aircraft, this Sea Harrier, uh, well, all the Harriers. And the Pegasus engine is probably one of the highest thrust to weight engines. I mean, it's not the highest, but the whole point of this engine is that the Pegasus engine has to lift the entire weight of the aircraft on the four ducts that are on the side of it and uh, without any aerodynamic help so obviously the thrust to weight ratio and the overall weight of this engine had to be incredibly finely tuned and it's all based off that Orpheus engine that we just had a look at.